Good evening and welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for joining us. A very special Friday evening, November 27th broadcast with General McInerney, Mary Fanning, and we'll be joined later by Alan Jones. We're going to cover a lot of very important topics tonight. Hold on just one second. Let's see if this call is. Hello, Brent House. Thank you, General, for joining us. We've just gotten on the air. Let me announce. Uh, in fact, let me have General McInerney. General McInerney, uh, we have just been joined by a friend of yours. Would you like to uh, introduce our friend to the broadcast audience tonight? Yes, I would like to, Brandon, to let everybody know that General Mike Flynn is going to join us tonight in the few days that he has been pardoned by the United States, by the President of the United States. It is a great honor for us to have him and for he and I to speak along with Mary and Alan about the treason that has been committed against this administration, this country, and this president. And General Flynn was a key part of that, that this threat that we are facing today did. So it's an absolute great honor to have you with us, Mike. Absolutely. And we must let America know what's happening. Absolutely. With that, General, I am just going to give you the floor. I know you're on a cell phone, but I'm just going to give you the floor and let you speak to the American people. Thank you for joining us tonight. So, first of all, I want to just say thanks, uh, Tom, for, uh, for getting a hold of me and asking me to come on tonight. And, Brandon, appreciate you connecting me in. I, here's, I, I, don't know, I don't know what your audience is or who, who, you know, the, or who we're speaking to tonight, but I would tell you what's happening in this country should – should never happen and we are going through there's no doubt in my mind we're going through a a uh a, a crucible of history and if we don't if we don't correct what it is that's happening right now over the next couple of weeks then then i i i really hate to even think about what will happen in our country going forward into the latter part of december and certainly into the into the next month i do not believe i do not believe for a second that the country will accept vice president biden as the next president based on what we know to be probably the greatest fraud that our country has ever experienced in our history i mean what we're seeing what i what i'm in right in the middle of it right now and i will tell you that first of all the president has clear paths to victory they have clear paths to victory, and they actually don't require a lot of a lot of courtroom action. What they require is they they require a lot of honesty out of uh, elected officials, and frankly, a lot of Americans who who are coming forward and telling us their stories. I mean, the hundreds and hundreds of Americans around the country in different states, not just the swing states, but but many many other states that are coming forward with their stories and putting them down on affidavits as witnesses. We had, we had probably 10 or 12 uh, affidavits come in from, a, from one particular state today. And because there's been a number of threats to people, these, in, these particular uh, patriots, they sent their photos in with their affidavits and said, put mine up on the, at the top of the list because I want people to know that I'm not going to be afraid of these people that are that are threatening our country and our way of life, and so I I say all that, and uh, you know, on one hand, on the other hand, uh, as I just uh, described, we have clear clear paths to victory for this president, and frankly, he's going to win Pennsylvania, he's going to win Arizona, he's going to win uh, Georgia, he's going to win Nevada, he's going to win uh, Michigan. And the other, the other one that he's probably going to pull in is Wisconsin too, because there, there's a uh, there's a discrepancy in Wisconsin of 130,000 fraudulent ballots that they just found, they just discovered. So there's a lot of things happening, and uh, and it's all to me, it's all positive. I was asked today on a scale of one to ten, who will be the next president, and I said ten, it'll be Donald Trump. It'll be President Trump. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in my mind that he won this election hands down in a landslide, probably somewhere between 350 and 400 uh, uh, electoral college votes. What we have seen 
is over, and I, I know this, I mean, over the last probably two decades and probably longer, I could, you know, give you a little bit of a history lesson in that, but I won't. But over the last couple of decades, what we have seen is a complete uh, shift in how fast I, I believe that communist China, uh, in their long-term plan, decided that to, to sort of move up their plans to become the, the, the global superpower, sole global, global superpower on the planet. And, uh, you know, their, their sort of plan was by about the middle of this, of this century that we're in right now. And I believe when during the last 2016 election, when they didn't get the candidate that they needed and the and the kind of ideology that they they saw America moving towards, they uh, were not going to allow 2020 to happen. And so now what we have is is this uh, theft with mail in ballots, the theft with this um, with this uh, this software, Smartmatic software and Dominion, these Dominion systems. I mean, these are systems that are not owned by the by this country. They're not owned by this country. They're owned by other. They, they were introduced into this country. I mean, how can we have? How can we say, as the United States of America, how can we say that we accept a system that is not made in this country, and not even and and the and in many of the cases the ballots aren't even tallied in this country. How can we say that here in this country that we we accept that? The one thing, and and for you all, and and uh, for all your listeners, the one most precious thing that makes me the same as the wealthiest guy or gal on the planet, or the or the poorest person on the you know on the in America, what makes us equal? What makes us equal is when we go in to a voting booth and we close that curtain, or we go in there and we and we lean over to vote, my vote matters the same as the, as the guy who's the richest guy you know, in America. It, it, it matters the exact same. That's where we are equal. And that's why this has to be fair and free. And it, and it was not. And, it, and we probably, in fact, we know we have evidence of previous elections where this happened as well, but we're now focused on this one. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, we're we're not in this to lose. We are not in this to lose these battles. We're in this to win these battles. And, and, uh, and I believe we're going to. I believe we're going to win. And, uh, and I'm, I'm confident we are because we have the right people. We have the right uh, plan and strategy. And, you know, it's a little bit of direct and a little bit of indirect uh, that, uh, that we're taking. And, um, and people are talking all the time to each other. So, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm anxious, and you probably hear it in my voice that I'm a little anxious because I just cannot believe the media and the censorship that is going on. Uh, I, I mean, just look at what they do to the president of the United States of America. Look at what Twitter is doing to the president of the United States of America. I mean, this is, this is, it's, it's infuriating to me. Uh, it's a bomb. It's an abomination of the First Amendment, our freedom of speech. And frankly, for the president of the United States of America, the only means that he really has to be able to communicate is, it, is when he walks outside or he goes in front of a, a group of people and he, or he walks outside and talks to the press or he uses social media to communicate because the media is not going to allow him to get his message out there. I mean, the, the uh, major press... Uh, not press conference, but the hearing that they had in Pennsylvania the other day, and if and if anybody had a chance to watch it, I mean it was an extraordinary hearing with uh, with you know politicians from Pennsylvania uh, senators on a panel, and the the uh, the one senator that ran the panel for the state of Pennsylvania that listened to the hearing, listened to a bunch of witnesses, listened to Rudy, listened to uh, to Jen Ellison and, and others on their team. The, the, uh, the individual that ran it was a retired military colonel, and he's now a state senator in Pennsylvania. And he gave, at the very end of it, he gave a really good short summary speech. And it was heartwarming because it was sort of a mom and apple pie that, hey, we can't allow this to happen in our country. We cannot, you know, um, portray, portray ourselves to the world as a third world nation. And it was a really, really good 
uh, you know, closing speech. And what did Twitter do? Twitter took him offline immediately. They they completely removed his uh, his Twitter account, so so people couldn't follow this guy. I mean, it's just outrageous. It's outrageous. That's a social media company that is uh, part of the public square. Uh, they they are taking advantage of of uh, of what they have been given, which is a real privilege, and they're abusing it. And so anyway. I, I mean, I could go on and on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop and just see if you have any questions on anything, or, or you want to jump in on anything that I said. But I, I'm upset. I am determined. Uh, I, I am, uh, I'm going to be resilient, and, uh, and I believe that I reflect millions and millions and millions of people across this country who feel the exact same way that I do. Absolutely, folks. We're being joined. If any of you new joining us by General Michael Flynn and. Um, General, you mentioned in your statement you put out the other day, uh, thanking the president of the United States, uh, you mentioned and you used the word coup. You mentioned we never again should allow uh, this to happen to the American people. You used the word uh, uprooted, undercut, usurped, or held hostage by a coup against our nation. Would you care to expand upon the word coup? Because I know General McInerney has used the word over and over, coup d'etat. I, I know you're a, not a man given to hyperbole, so I know that word did not make that into your statement you released for no reason. Would you care to expand upon the use of that word? Sure. I mean, I, I think what we experienced over the last four years, and certainly uh, in the, in the uh, late 2016 very late 2016 and early 2017 period was a very strong uh, effort to unseat a duly elected president and and really try to remove uh, Donald Trump by just political pressure, by technology pressure, by financial pressure early on in his uh, in his tenure. Maybe maybe to get him to just say, you know what, I'm I'm not gonna I, you know I don't need this. I'm not gonna put up with it and 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 walk away. I think that there was some sentiment in fact i know there was some sentiment to to maybe he'll just you know he's a he's a guy from new york he's never not a politician he'll just say you know what I, I don't need this stuff i got better things to do and leave and uh thank god that he didn't and that then lasted when he didn't that then continued that effort continued continued to go after him in any way possible to remove him through some means whether it was the the fake uh russia gate you know, spy gate or whether it was the fake impeachment or some of the other, the, you know, the, the kind of stuff that we're seeing with this, with this COVID uh, situation that we, that we're having to deal with now. So that's, that's the first phase, if you will, that was, and that was still, uh, that's something that's been going on for years. Now we're moving into something different. So, and, and not different in terms of it. This is still, this is still a coup in progress. But now it's a little bit different, and it's a, it's it's actually it's sort of they up their game. When they lost in 2016, I think that there was a decision, and I and I you know I believe this, and, and but there was some type of decision to say we're not going to allow this to happen again. I mean, all you got to do is go back and uh, and listen to some of the comments this past summer from some of the some of the senior people that that were you know that are part of this this democratic party, right? I mean, Hillary Clinton won being, you know, I think it was back in July or certainly mid summer time frame where she said, you know, uh, it, you know, no matter what Joe Biden should not concede. Well, what, what are we talking about there? I mean, why would she say that in, in the middle of the summer, three, maybe four months before an election? So one of the things that I, that I do know from my experience, you know, uh, in the military and, and on, in different places around the world is when, is when you're when your enemy tells you that they're going to do something, you better pay attention to what they said, and you better you better have some plans and you better have some ideas about how to deal with that if in fact that does come to fruition. Well, in this case, we have opposing camps in the you know in our opposing camps of our political parties, and we know that the that the political party on the left is really way, way over on the left. Now, I don't, I don't, I have a hard time calling it 
or calling someone a Democrat or the Democratic Party. That's a name only, folks, because it's really the Democratic Socialist Party of America that has, you know, usurped and taken over that element. And they are a very loud voice. And so they're, they're Katie, sort of Katie bar the door uh, assault on us, on our country and our way of life. And they're doing anything they can right now to try to to try to pretend like, OK, nothing to see here. And uh, Joe, you know, Joe's going to be our next president here. And I'm just telling you, it's the the, the level of of, uh, of fraudulent activity, definitely um, what I would describe as what we have seen and what has been reported to us as, as certainly criminal behavior. But that, you know, that remains to be seen as because that's something that would have to be uh, further investigated. But from a from the from the civil side of what I, I know people are involved in, there's definitely thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of ballots. So so what what happened in a very strategic way is that the the electronic vote did not achieve the result that they needed on the 3rd of November, on Tuesday, the 3rd of November, the electronic vote did not achieve the result that they needed to be able to get, get them over the top and get the votes that they needed because essentially the, the system was not, the, the, the systems were not set up in a way to get the vote count to where it needed to be. And all, at the same time, kind of hiding how they were doing it, mixing numbers and such and, doing it in different ways in different uh, states. So when that happened, they then, they realized, okay, we have to stop. We have to shut down. Unheard of, unprecedented. And then Vice President Biden goes to bed. And they shut down, you know, five states that night. Shut down, stopped. How, how does that, how do we ever allow that to happen? And then, of course, over the next couple of days, really from the 4th of November through the 7th of November, we start to see the mail-in ballot, uh, you know, the, the whole instance of mail-in ballot fraud. And, and I mean, it is, there's a, a whole bunch of evidence and a whole bunch of people that have come forward. I mean, there's probably, there's overall, there's probably a couple of hundred, and I'm, I'm lowballing it, affidavits, people who have stood up and said, I'm sick of it. And these are Democrats and Republicans. We just got another, another piece tonight in another part of the country from a Democrat, a woman who's just absolutely sick and tired of what she saw, and she just wasn't sure what to do, and she finally said, I'm, i got to go forward, and i got to report this. I can't live with myself. That is what's happening with people who are feeling in their heart that, that sense of patriotism to still say, look, I don't want my country to turn into something else because that's what these people want. They do not want our country to be the republic that it is. They want it to be something else and change it. As we heard one president say, you know, we want to fundamentally change America. And, and that's not what people want. People want to live the life that they have with the, with the, the liberties and freedoms that we have uh, under this constitutional, this great constitutional republic that we have. So uh, that, that's... That's sort of where we are, and that's and that's what I mean by by that. This is an ongoing effort. It's not the go go take the Capitol, go take the radio station like we've done, you know, in the past, you know, in, in our own history, years ago in Central America or the Caribbean or over in 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 some of these other countries where we've we've participated or we've supported some of this stuff, or we certainly have watched it in other third world nations. Now it's happening in our country. We cannot stand for it. It's, it's a new way of warfare. Uh, is it not, General? Is that what you're saying? This is kind of the new way of warfare, and it is cyber warfare. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's cyber. It's a combination of things. It's certainly information. It's yes. information. I mean, it's how you leverage information, how you leverage, uh, you know, the whole thing about psychological operations is you have to make sure that you pick the target, and you, and then uh, repetition with the message over and over and over and over uh, has to occur. And it's the only way you can do that in a country our size, with all of the ways that we communicate, is you've got to you, you've got to basically get the get the media on your side. And look at how many that, that's that's taken some number of years. But 
but I, I can't stand here and tell you that that's not the case because it is. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows the, the quote unquote mainstream media, which, which is a, a pretty robust uh, group of, of uh, organizations. And that includes the, the, the tech companies, right? The, when I say tech companies, the social media tech companies, everything from Facebook to Instagram, of course, Twitter, I mentioned, all of these things are, are, uh, are just, it's, you know, they, they are trying to control a narrative and tell the American people what they should know instead of allowing the American people information and letting, letting each of us decide what's important or not. So it's, and, it's brainwashing. And, it's, it's information right. warfare. It's brainwashing. It's psychological operation. It's those things that you studied and others study when they go through SEER school, correct? Well, it's a, it's more than that. It's more than that. But yeah, it's it's the kind of it's the type of warfare. And, and, and in fact, you know, if you study Chinese doctrine, Chinese doctrine has six phases. The first five phases all have to do with information. This, the, the, the last part of it would be if if those failed or if you needed an additional, you know, oomph, so to speak. You go to the gates, I say, you know, you, th that's when you may see something Connecticut, kinetic. But we are we are um, we're in this sort of period of, of information warfare. That's it's unprecedented. I mean, I, again, I'm going to I'm going to stand on my box here and say the president of the United States of America is being censored by U.S. companies. I mean, think about that. Think about that. I, I, I don't. I, I, I'm at a loss sometimes when I, when I talk about it and I talk about it, you know, a couple of times a day to, to, to different people in different groups. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm trying to say, okay, you know, at a certain point in time, we have to, you know, that, that has to stop being allowed when, when, when a, when a company says what you just said, Mr. President, you know, is is not totally the truth, or there's fraud involved here, or, or or fraud hasn't been proven. I mean, how dare they say? How dare they do that to the president of the United States? Because he's not going to get a he's not going to get a uh, a fair shot. You know, going out into the mainstream media crowd. He, I mean, look at look, look at the uh, the interview that he did. Uh, I guess it was yesterday, where he had a, a I mean, somebody's talking to the president of the United States in the in his office there and he had to he had to counsel the person don't talk to the don't talk to me like that don't talk to the president of the united states like that i mean it's like a bunch of a bunch of school punks in a, in a in a schoolyard you can't have that we can't have that in this country i mean debate and and uh and and sharp questions but not not uh, uh totally totally disrespect to not just the president you may not you may not like him and that and and that's fine but he represents the presidency of the United States of America. He represents our flag, our constitution, our country. And so actually, everything that we are experiencing right now actually is more than just an assault on President Trump. This is an assault on the American Republic, on, the con on, this, on this great country that we have. And people, people around the country, I, I know they're, they're, they're fed up with it. And they're not going to put up with it. And uh, and what they're what they're waiting to see is they're waiting to see the outcome of their own uh, elected officials in the states uh, do their job. And and just because CNN or Fox News or or a governor or a secretary of state certify an election, if the state legislature has not certified the election, then it's not certified in a particular state. And if there's a challenge, and there's a legitimate legal challenge then they can't sit, sit there and certify it while there's a legal challenge ongoing. It's just, it's just not, the, not the way it works. So the media is not going to cover any of that for you. The, the big media, they're just not going to cover it. And it's, just, and it's sad because they're trying to shove it down our throat. And uh, the American public, they see right through it. Well, and we're thankful you came to us, one of the alternative media sites. And these are all growing rapidly. And when they all are added yeah. together... You're reaching millions upon millions of people through the, the new media. I don't, want to I don't want to keep you, General, longer yeah. than you want to stay. You've been very generous. The, I would like to ask you just a couple more questions. We have people that you know I know are getting frustrated. They're, they're pacing the floor. I mean, they're really 
really is up, upsetting to them to see what the media is saying and how it's discouraging people. But you're telling them to hang in there that this is going to all work out. I don't know if you can speak to it or not. If you cannot, just say so. But I know that Sidney Powell has been speaking about a lot of information that will be coming out. Uh, she wants to get it into court, not into the, to the media to try it, but into the court. But can you or can you not speak to any of the hard evidence related to the server in Germany? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't want to speak to that right now. Okay. I, I, you know, that's there's she's 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 uh, uh, you know mentioned it and and, uh, and she's actually has some really good filings. They just filed another amendment, I believe, in Georgia. So they filed in Georgia. They filed in Michigan today, just today, and uh, probably within the last hour or two, they just filed another another uh, amendment to uh, to those in Georgia and back back again in Michigan. And I think uh, the next couple of priorities, you know, are, are looking at some of these other states where there's some big challenges. But uh, so, you know, you really do have to go and dig into, uh, and, and this is the challenge. You've got to go and dig into the into the filings instead of reading a soundbite here or there because it it it's 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 our life. This is our country. This is the time in our in our history where if we don't get this right. This country is done. It will be over as we know it. And I am, I, and as I stand here talking to you, I, I don't do, I'm not standing here for me. I'm standing here for my children, my grandchildren. And frankly, you know, the, 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 the beacon of hope that we are as a, as a uh, country. And I, I would say, I would say, and I'll, I'll just wrap it up because I, I do, uh, I got, I'm going to have to jump here. There are, there are paths to victory. I mean, you know, it's, it's clear. And, and so key, key states are Georgia, Michigan, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, Arizona, Nevada. I mean, there's ways that, that the president can get to and his team can get him to the, to the, the, the margin that he needs to win without actually without Pennsylvania, but he's going to win Pennsylvania too. So, I'll leave. I'll leave you, and I'll leave the audience with this because I I, I don't want my tone to be, um, you know, so so strong where I you know you, you sense a frustration. I'm really not frustrated. I'm determined, and I'm re and I am going to remain resilient to this assault that we have ongoing by by elements in our country that are trying to tell us don't look here. You know, everything will be just fine. It, it won't be. We cannot have this. We cannot allow this. We are uh, we are going to um, we're going to get this straight. We're going to straighten it out. It's going to be done properly. It's going to be done legally. It's going to be done correctly, and it's going to be done uh, with with uh, with American patriots who love this country and who are fighting like warriors uh, in a, on a sort of on a legal battleground for sure. With people like Cindy Powell, uh, like like uh, Rudy Giuliani and his team, like people like Lynn Wood who's fighting tooth and nail. And, you know, I, most people don't even know he, 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 uh, his case that he's got going on in Georgia, uh, just got picked up by the, uh, 11th circuit, uh, down in Georgia. And, and, uh, that's a good sign because that means that, that the one judge down there that thought he was going to dismiss his case, the, uh, the 11th circuit pulled it out of him and brought it and brought it up to their level to an appeals level because they saw that there was enough evidence. So, I believe we're going to see some momentum changing here. There already is an undercurrent of momentum shifting for the president. And I believe that at the end of the day, we're going to find out that he won by a massive landslide and he'll be inaugurated uh, come this January. General, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your service to our country. And uh, you, you've honored us with your words tonight and your time. And we appreciate uh, you taking the time to join us and speak to the American people. And not only are we live, but of course we will then put this out as a, a broadcast that will go far and wide. So you'll be encouraging an awful lot of people by taking the time tonight. So General, thank you for doing that. Great, great friend. And uh, Tom, thank you for, uh, for getting me uh, the invite. God bless America, thank you. Thank you, General. General Flynn, all right, now we're gonna be joined back again by General McInerney, Lieutenant General McInerney, Mary Fanning. Wow, I don't know how much of that you guys could hear because I was having to go off the cell phone, but could you guys hear that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, General uh, McInerney, would you like to comment on what your uh, friend had to say? And thank you for helping set that up. 
Well, it is absolutely vital because this is the first time that I believe that uh, General Flynn has been able to speak publicly and, uh, and in such a, an environment. And so I want to thank you, Banyan, for, for, for setting this up. I know Mary talked to you, and it, it's very important what you have, are doing tonight because it is a fast-moving train. And that's why uh, I wanted you to do it, because uh, we are seeing the most unprecedented situation in the history of America. This is the most dangerous situation since the Civil War of keeping this nation united. And why do I say that? In the Civil War, it was just warfare. Today, you and General Flynn talked about cyber warfare. And cyber warfare is hidden. It's mystical. You don't see it coming. It happens. And all of a sudden, 138,000 votes or 150,000 votes, all of a sudden they show up. And because we're looking at computers, we assume they're all legitimate. But in this particular case, they are not legitimate. And because of what uh, Sidney Powell has been doing, who was General Flynn's lawyer, and uh, what she submitted uh, in the state of Georgia and Michigan on uh, Wednesday night, the night before Thanksgiving, uh, we got a document in that loss in those lawsuits from a Dr. Navid Kishavaritz Nia, who is a 59-year-old resident of California who spent 40 years almost in the D.C. metropolitan area as a career intelligence community expert. I won't go into his background very much, but because of this uh, declaration that he made in which I am quoted and independently confirming uh, he uses my name, Kirk Wiebe, who is a former NSA official, a good friend of ours in working with Mary and I, and Dennis Montgomery, a former CIA analyst, who was really the creator, inventor of the hammer and scorecard capabilities. And that's what we broke, and we broke it uh, on Sunday and Monday before the election, saying that this was going to be uh, an action that will happen in what transpired did in fact transpire. And uh, Mary was very instrumental in, in informing me of this information. And all of a sudden, two days before, two and a half days before the voting started on the 3rd of November, this was the 1st of November, I became involved in the voting game. My, my background is a military analyst. And for 16 and a half years, I was on Fox News as a military analyst. Uh, I have been the number three man in the air staff and the Air Force, and so I had a great background. But what made this so easy for me, Brandon, is I run a cloud company, an edge cloud company. I am intimately familiar with this kind of technology and what it's doing and lived by it in my military days. Uh, everybody remembers when we attacked Tripoli in 1986 in Gaddafi. I was the commander, and they launched from my bases in England. Now, I got that information from the British and other sources, but my whole life has been based on this. And what I'm seeing now is those technologies now are used against the American people. They are trying to seize control of this nation through technology and through cyber warfare. And they have enlisted to include Fox News, who flipped on us. They have enlisted the mainstream media and the First Amendment to try to get on their side. And General Flynn talked about the censorship, for instance, that Twitter does and determines what President Trump can say. That is ridiculous. It must stop. But because of all these assets and they are using and misusing the Constitution of the United States, 
They have put us in a position that our forefathers were not aware of cyber warfare. And so when they set out in the Constitution the process of our election and going through the Electoral College, the voters meeting on 14 December, announcing who the president will be, and then going through in the 20th of November, the uh, inauguration, that was not based upon cyber warfare. And so we have a time clock, and I bring this up to our listeners, we have a time clock, and we have to go through the legal system that was not designed to operate in the cyber world. And so we have many judges turning down and not recognizing what has happened. And so that is the challenge that we are facing. And what my point I want to get across tonight, it doesn't matter if we have locked and sealed this decision process by the 14th of December. The president should not leave office until it is adequately here. We, the American people, will demand that these facts be analyzed and looked at. And I'm going to cover some of those facts that have made it so compelling to me that there is no question about it. And let's start with the vote count distribution in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia are not based on normal system operation. They are caused by fraudulent electronic manipulation of the targeted voting machines. For instance, at 2.30 a.m. on the 4th of November, TV broadcasts reported that Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia have decided to cease vote counting operations and will continue the following day. This unanimous decision to initially and intentionally, intentionally stop counting by all five battleground states is highly unusual. As a matter of fact, it is unprecedented and it demonstrates prior coordination by election officials in battleground states, those five states that General Flynn mentioned. And because of this big flashing light to anybody that is under, understands the voting process, it immediately flagged this, and we start looking at each one of those states because they didn't stop counting. All of a sudden, in Michigan, at 4 o'clock in the morning, 138,000 votes show up. All four, guess who? Biden. He was behind in all those states when they decided to cease voting, and that's where they employed the cyber warfare, the hammer and scorecard plus the Dominion uh, voting machines and the software in them. That's where they put these applications on, like your iPhone, and they got a smooth voting. Now, when the numbers came, started coming back in in those five states, they were different numbers, 138,000 in Michigan, you know, uh, 100,000 or 90,000 in Arizona. These, now, this is notional. A different one in Nevada and Georgia and Pennsylvania. But the important point was they were exactly at the same percentage. This is a mathematical impossibility that this could have happened, and it means an algorithm was used. And this algorithm was designed to stay within the bounds, and when the assembled numbers were uh, put together, it wouldn't be obvious that these numbers of votes were inserted. And so... This is a huge flashing red light, and it's important that people understand with this kind of data that we're seeing. Some more numbers that are interesting. Sydney pointed out in Georgia that there are 96,000 absentee votes that were disregarded in Fulton County. They had a water leak. Pennsylvania. The state of Pennsylvania mailed out 1.8 million votes to their citizens. The state did. These are not uh, absentee ballots. These were these ballots that have no chain of custody. Lo and behold, Brandon, 2.5 million came back. 
if someone had to have a printing press and were cranking them out. That is just the pure sniff test that doesn't require a genius to understand. If you mail out 1.5 and 1.8 and get 2.5 million back, something is wrong. Now, Sydney and uh, the president, through I believe General Flynn, have got the Kraken organization, the 305 Military Intelligence Battalion, working with them. Because in all of this, we have not seen any footprints of the DOJ, of the FBI, nor the CIA on the friendly side. Wait a it's minute. It's been let's, on the deep state side. Let me, let me just stop you there, General, because you just said something very interesting. You just said that who has just opened up the Kraken, and then you just described what the Kraken was. We all know the term because of uh, Sidney Powell using it, but you just said what it is. Can you back up on that? Yes. Sidney got the term Kraken because that's the nickname of the 305th Military Intelligence Battalion. And that has been her source, along with other sources that Mary and I know about, but we don't want to talk about. And so we're, we're getting the different sources that are relaying this. But the important thing is they identified, now get this, they identified China, Iran, and Russia as being involved in this and manipulating and manipulating the votes. In addition... The U.S. Army, the U.S. Special Forces Command seized a server farm in Frankfurt, Germany, because they were sending this data from those five states or six states through <clears throat> the Internet to Spain and then into Frankfurt, Germany. Special Operations Forces seized those, that facility. So they have those servers. And did, they know all this data they are provided. Did that go down without now, incident, by the way? Did that seizure go down without incident? Well, I've heard it, uh, it, it didn't go down without incident. I haven't been able to verify it. I, I want to be careful in that. It's just coming out. But uh, I understand my initial report is that there were U.S. soldiers killed in that operation. Now... That was a CIA operation. And so that's the, that's the very worrisome thing. Did that occur because of what uh, Mary and I and Alan were notifying on the Sunday and the Monday in different networks that this was going to happen, that they were using hammer and scorecard, and so they decided to bounce it overseas so the, the server farms and that... Uh, hammer and scorecard we're using in the continental United States couldn't be used. I don't know that. In any case, it makes it more vulnerable uh, because when you start moving that kind of data overseas, other people look at it. But you are saying and that was that, a, you are saying that was a CIA facility and that, that was where the server was taken from by these special forces was a CIA facility in Germany. That's correct. Frankfurt, Germany. Now, we have all this information. General Flynn, of course, people must realize, was the senior military intelligence officer in the U.S. commands as a defense intelligence agency. Uh, he's a career intelligence officer, knows this stuff backwards and forwards. And from my experience in the cloud business, this was a trivial operation relatively speaking. But the magnitude, because it, so many people, Brandon, were involved, so many people, like General Flynn mentioned, the uh, Democrat person saw this, are coming forward. But what we are doing, we are competing with the Constitution and the 14 December date for the Electoral College. And why? Because we have this information, and we know, we know that uh, not only did we have the deep state in the executive that President Trump had to fight, we also had it in the legislature where you have Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Schumer, all of those people were involved in this. 
They were involved in the Russian hoax. They were involved in this coup d'etat. But we also had the judiciary. And Judge Sullivan, who was General Flynn's judge, outed himself on this. And so you have the compromise there, and that's why the 305th, the Krakens, were targeted and selected, I believe, because uh, the president could trust them. That's why Chris Miller, who is now the acting secretary of defense and a former special operations hero, that's why Chris Miller is the secretary of defense. What, what about what about his speech that's gone viral of him directing all special operations forces to answer directly to him? Well, that tells you something, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It tells you that that we had to tighten up because there are people that are part of this conspiracy. This is treason. What we're talking about. Some people may just think, oh, it's just politics. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh, President Obama used it in 2012 to win. He and uh, Biden used it to win Florida. So uh, the Democrats used it during the uh, primary so Bernie Sanders would lose and uh, Biden would win. You know, that's, that, that's politics. You know, we've been cheating. No, it's not politics. This is treason. Benedict Arnold gave away West Point, or tried to, in the Revolutionary War. We haven't seen treason of this magnitude ever in our history. And those politicians, those people, like uh, the head of the uh, Chris Krebs, who's the head of the Cyber Warfare Infrastructure Security Agency, he was until he was fired a couple weeks ago or more by the president because said this was a perfect election. He is guilty of treason. He had to be complicit, and people must understand that. You people that have done this are guilty of treason against the United States, and we are going to demand this president, insist this president not leave office until the American people have had a full uh, disclosure of what's going on. What you're saying, now, General, we is... Have reasonable let me just clarify. What you're saying is that President Trump needs to fulfill his oath that he took to defend America against enemies, both foreign and domestic, and he must not let deadlines stop him from fulfilling that oath. Is that what I hear you say? That is exactly what you heard me say, Brian. Now, the how high does the treason go? The Constitution. Beg your pardon? I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. The president has in his uh, uh, oath to the Constitution to defend the country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And we shouldn't let a schedule that we know is so, is so blatantly flawed that anybody can understand that with just the items I've given our listeners tonight. And when you have hundreds of thousands of votes that were uh, falsified, and we know they're falsified, and by the way, I believe those servers are going to show that. And I believe that he is going to show that. It'll probably have to be done at the Supreme Court because you have uh, judges like Sullivan and that that are going to try to protect themselves because the fingers are going to start pointing to everybody. You know, well, I didn't know this. I didn't know that. You know, they're going to use the Nuremberg trial. Well, the, the Fuhrer told me to do this. They're going to say, well, President Obama knew I was doing this. He told me to do it. And uh, or Vice President Biden or Biden was the, the runner here. He told me to do it. You know, they're going to point fingers. But when you have people that are driving up in cars with truckla with carloads of ballots, some not even folded, and they're, they're driving them into these five or six battleground states, you know, they're going to talk. They don't want to be involved in treason. And so people are going to talk the magnitude of this. And, and the vote, because I think, I think the president won in such an overwhelming vote. Well, I know he did that they had to do these things, and, and these were not. There's no skilled in the craftsmanship of what they were trying to do. They were trying to match the ballots with the numbers that they had come up with and determined were needed. And doing that in real time, you had a digit, an analog of trying to get ballots. And then digital was easy. You can just change it 
the numbers, and I won't give the, the chap's name, but someone, a Republican on television last night, was saying why it would be so important for the, the Republicans to get out in Georgia. It doesn't matter how many people we get out in Georgia, Brandon. They'll just up the number. It's a digital number for them. We cannot let this them use hammer and scorecard. And in my opinion, we can't have these mail-in ballots in Georgia in time. They should leave the polls open. But they must get a chain of custody. We can't have this absolute disregard for the laws of the land and by judges and by legislatures. They must get hold of this. There is a path. But I believe that they're going to, the Democrats are going to think this is politics and they're going to try to shut that down. Well, if they do, then the American people must demand that the president stay in office until this is cleared up because it's treason, it's a coup d'etat uh, against the government of the United States, and we cannot accept that. That's three star general uh, McInerney. Go look up his bio. I don't have time to get into it tonight because we've given it over and over. Three-star general Thomas McInerney. Go look up his bio, folks. He's not a man given to hyperbole. Again, Mary Fanning and Alan Jones broke this story in December of 2015. Thomas McInerney, General McInerney, talked about this in March 2017 on uh, Dave's program. Dave, what's his name again, Mary? Ganda. Dave Ganda, his show. And then the next day, the Russian hoax comes up by Comey. I guess a smoke screen, right? So they've been on this a right. long time, a long time. In general, I received three phone calls from three different people tied to the intelligence arena a couple weeks ago, trying to tell me that I was going to be embarrassing myself if I didn't quit talking about this, that it was all conspiracy and fake. And it's now being revealed that those, I guess, were calls to try to get me to stop using our network, our platform, to inform the American people. Because now we just are starting to figure out what a lot of these words like Kraken and other things mean. And it, it is all coming out that the, there are those inside the intelligence arena that were trying to shut this down. Now I think there are some inside the intelligence arena that are trying now to take the story and control it. Are they not? Yes. And they are guilty of treason. Mary, would you care to comment? Mary, you, you've been quiet. i got to get you in here because you and, you and Alan Jones broke this in December 2015. And, uh, wow, you, you guys deserve some kind of huge uh, literary and research award. But please, get in on what you've heard tonight. We have amazing leaders in this country, and there are none better than General McInerney and General Mike Flynn. And I will tell you that bad actors, both foreign and domestic, use this middle, man in the middle proxies to cover their tracks. There was an attempt not just to steal the election, but to steal America. The founding fathers may not have known about cyber warfare, but they certainly recognized tyranny when they saw it. President Trump cannot leave office when we have China and Iran having access to our elections. We cannot let them steal America through their illegal acts of treason an act of war against this country. Act of war. And I think that's exactly what it is. Um, and we've got Iran, China, uh, Russia involved Russia. in Russia. Yep. General, we've now got Russia making threats about missiles. We've got them talking about ramming ships. We've got Iran out there talking about uh, retaliation. We see their, their father of their uh, nuclear program has now been taken out in the last 24 hours or so. Uh, we see that R Iran is bragging about putting missile uh, launchers on their cargo ships. Um, what does all this mean? Well, it means a great deal of instability if we let the U.S. government be seized by people that are committing treason and cheating. They knew exactly what they were doing. Look, does everybody think that the pattern for victory for Democrats in the future is no major press conferences with any hard questions. The largest rally he had was 14 people in 14 cars honking horns and staying in the basement. Is that the model for a successful victory for the president of the United States? No, but he knew something. All those people knew that the number was going to come out. People in uh, betting 
in uh, Las Vegas. There's a great article about that, and the uh, the uh, the people in the casinos ought to look at those winners because they had inside information, and they are guilty of treason because they didn't tell the proper authorities. Anybody that was complicit. Fox News, in my opinion, some of those people are guilty of treason, whether it's the president, whoever it is, because they flipped and they knew what they were doing and they made those early announcements. And so anybody involved with this is complicit in it. If they didn't tell and alert the president of the United States and their proper officials. Do you believe this so goes all the way? Do you believe this goes all the way back up to Nancy Pelosi, to Adam Schiff, to Barack Obama, to Joe Biden? Yes. It had to. It had to. The way they act, the way they did things, everything they've done, the Russian hoax. Now we've got to know if John Durham, what is the status of John Durham? And the Attorney General, Bill, yeah. what is the status of their work? What have they done? General McInerney, before we run out of time, we're going to go about 10 minutes over uh, because that's when our cards also run out. We want to preserve all of this to get out in uh, duplication to the American people. So we don't want to go where our cards run out. So we'll go about another eight, nine minutes. But September 12, 2018, executive order on imposing certain sanctions in the event of foreign interference in a United States election. How much will this executive order by President Trump play into this, and how so? Well, I think, and I'm going to ask Mary to also talk about it, but I think it will play a major role. It tells me, Brandon, that the president knew something was happening and that this was going to come about. Mary? And so I think, Mary, you can uh, go into the details. Go ahead, Mary. Well, there's, there's, there's an abundance of evidence that the 2020 presidential election was stolen from President Trump on behalf of Joe Biden, with Joe Biden's assistance, because Joe Biden said he had the greatest voter fraud group in history put together. Uh, we cannot let this stand. It will be the theft of America. The American people must stand up. Mary, I have an article here in front of me dated June 7th, 2017. You're in here writing about a, a program, I think, was it called, uh, help me out here, was it called Turkey or something, Wild Turkey or something? Wild Turkey are some of the exploits that work off of the hammer as well as scorecard and as well as Medusa. These are exploits that were created. Wild Turkey was not created by Dennis Montgomery, but Medusa and scorecard worked off of the hammer. Well, here, here you are in 2017 writing about this. Again, you and Alan Jones, your co-author, their book, by the way, can be found on Amazon, The Hammer is the Key to the Coup, which is the, some of the final words of four-star Admiral Lyons to his friend, General McInerney, because they were researching and talking about this. Remember, they, they Admiral Lyons, four stars, General uh, McInerney, Three stars did a radio show together in 2017, warning about this, and then this is when things really started bro breaking open. But again, it's 2015 that Mary Fanning and Alan Jones do all the research to start releasing the information over at theamericanreport.org, right, Mary? It's .org, correct? It, it is .org, yes. Theamericanreport.org. Mary, now we have guys, you know that I've got pressured by three people tied to the intelligence community to stop doing radio and TV on this. I wouldn't do it because I, I believe in you and Alan and the general, and um, I, just, I just wasn't going to back down. I'd seen enough information and enough proof. I, I knew the general's long credibility, and I wasn't going to back down. You know I got three phone calls from people tied to the intelligence arena to quit talking about this kind of stuff. You're going to look stupid and foolish. Now it's all being confirmed. But what's interesting, Mary, is you and I have talked about, I guess, some guy out there writing now who, who was, I guess, poo-pooing some of this, and now he wants to try to control the narrative and give interviews on it. And I noticed that in one of his interviews, he seems to try to defend the head of the CIA and the head of the FBI. So am I to believe that these people that were poo-pooing this as, hey, don't talk about this, well, now... Your research has been affirmed over and over, and so now they're going to try to take care, control the narrative, and are they going to try now, some of those same people, to defend the head of the CIA and FBI? Kind of interesting to watch this behavior, is it not? Am I right or wrong in my assumption here? I think you're exactly correct. This former CIA agent, uh, Larry, it's in uh, the front page mag article. People can read about it, but the fact that he's coming out and saying that 
uh, Gina had nothing to do with this, nor did Ray, is a highly suspect comment that he would like to leave these people in place. Anyone who's involved in this and is, is uh, on the side and standing with treason against this country, uh, regardless of which agency they're with, should think twice before they start uh, attempting to insinuate themselves into this um, this treasonous activity that's gone on for far too long. Mary, and this is this came. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Directly out of the Obama administration. This came directly out of the Obama administration when John Brennan and James Clapper illegally commandeered the foreign surveillance tool known as the hammer. Uh, it was designed by Dennis Montgomery in 2003 to keep America safe, as you write, commandeered by them about two weeks after Obama was sworn into office and put on servers, you write, uh, of the FBI under the d director of Mueller, correct? That's correct. According to Dennis Montgomery, Robert Mueller provided the computers for the hammer. And of course, they've tried to discredit uh, Dennis Montgomery because you can see why now. But as we've discussed in past programs, he got two immunity deals after being interviewed uh, and recorded. So apparently he didn't lie or he'd be in jail. He kept it, He got his immunity deals, kept some of his security clearances, is not in jail. So that should tell us a lot to the people trying to smear the guy. Um, Mary, uh, you believe, I believe this whole idea that Donald Trump needs to go ahead and concede, I think the one that should be conceding is Joe Biden. I think the American people should rise up in mass. I think conservatives should rise up in mass, tweet, Facebook, email, and begin to demand that Joe Biden concede. What say you? You cannot award the country to Joe Biden when he has cheated to steal an election. It's really that simple. Do you believe the American people are going to demand that some of these folks actually face the charges of treason? And how high do you think this could go? Or is this going to be the old well, Washington he, game of, of bl bl blaming Brandon, someone down the lower level? It's beyond the election. It's beyond the stolen votes. You have to look at Joe Biden and his family. Billions of dollars to his son, Hunter, his drug-addled son. Billions of dollars from China and billions from the Ukraine to, to Hunter Biden. Can you even imagine this in a different day? The fact that the, the media has remained silent as China and Iran and Russia are buying off our officials should tell you everything you need to know about the mockingbird media. Not, not to mention, Mary, as you report in your excellent report, The uh, Perfect Storm, the uh, Jafar family, the golf tanner family, Dr. Jafar, as you guys report, used to be the head of Saddam Hussein's nuclear program, making the nuclear beach ball, a miniaturized nuclear device. I think he was on the kill, the kill list during the war, and then his family and his business get a contract running Port Canaveral in Florida and in Wilmington, Delaware, cargo containers, and yet they're in some kind of business deals back with uh, the 100% Russian-owned exporter of the Club K car that has four cruise missile silos that pop up and can deliver cruise missiles, biological weapons, nuclear weapons, and could easily be planted down here in the U.S. as you have translated Russian uh, manuals for Pearl Harbor 2.0 into English that call for a Russian strategy of doing just that. And as you know, live on our show a few years ago, uh, Phil Haney, former Department of Homeland Security whistleblower, uh, revealed right on this show, hey, Brandon, you want another piece of interesting information to go with that? Look at Sidco, owned by Venezuela. They're in financial crisis with massive inflation. Uh, guess who's come in and bought up a big chunk of their company? Russia. Look at all the, their oil terminals up and down the eastern seaboard. Now Russia can bring in through the uh, oil terminals, the cargo terminals, the cargo terminals can bring in the Club K cargo missile launching system in this relationship with Dr. Jafar and Gulf Tainer, have caused now to move them into the U.S. and plop them down at oil refineries up and down the East Coast as a Trojan horse, and that's your perfect Pearl Harbor 2.0 that you've been warning about. And Phil Haney dropped that right on the news desk of our show live, and you happen to be watching that night. So there's way more to this than just the election. We're talking about them being inside the wire, and a lot of these people, the Bidens, the Obamas, Hillary, tied to some of these uh, actors, correct? Well, that's correct, um, beyond which um, the Jafars were put on the Pentagon's blacklist, meant that they were wanted for capture or kill Dr. Jafar Dia Jafar. And he's the nuclear mastermind of Saddam Hussein. And, you know, this, this is, but in order to take back our country, we must take back this election that Donald Trump won fair and square before they started cheating with foreign actors, Russia, China, Iran, that they, their hand is in here for the theft of this election. That's why the American people must stand up, and that is why President Donald Trump must 
abide by his oath to protect this country. He cannot step down until this election is fairly legally settled. And the reason I bring all that up, Mary, is, as you know, as an intelligence, national security intelligence author and researcher, all of this involves massive national intelligence implications. Absolutely. So let me just, let me just reiterate real quick. The news tonight, General Flynn calling in. Uh, also, uh, we've just found out from General McInerney, the Kraken is actually a military division. Did you say the 305th, known as the Kraken? That's a military division? That's the Kraken? No, it's a... It's a battalion. A battalion. A, a battalion. battalion. Military that... Intelligence Battalion. And Brandon, can I can I say one other thing in closing? Yes. Now this is going this is going directly to those that want to seize this country because they have hacked my cell phone, and and so everything I say on on this particular channel, open channel, they are copying. They mean business. They are deeply into this, and they now know that because of what you've done and what we've done tonight, that they are in even more trouble. And, uh, and we are coming against after you. The American people are going to come after you. And this president won this election, and he is going to be the president for the next four years. But we're after you. You will not seize this country because this would be the last free election we ever had. And I'm in agreement with you and Mary, that Joe Biden should step down right now. Joe Biden needs to concede. Folks, these are American heroes. General Flynn, General McInerney, Mary Fanning. I'm sorry we couldn't get another hero on here. Alan Jones, uh, who's written the book with her. These are great Americans that have uh, gone against unimaginable pressure uh, to not talk about this. But here it is, all out in the open now. And isn't it interesting, the alternative media has had to do it tonight. I want to thank all of them for joining us. I want to thank you for joining us. We'll have this post edited in HD and release right away for the American people to disseminate. And again, we do this because of your support at WVWFoundation.com. Thank you for your support. Thank you, General McInerney. Thank you, General Flynn. Thank you, Mary Fanning. And thank you, folks, for watching. Till next time, I'm Brandon House. Take care.